Welcome to Mimi's math channel. Today I will discuss conditional probability. What you see here is the formula that would normally be used for it, which is the probability of A given B is equal to the probability of A and B divided by the probability of B. So when you're looking at this, this notation here represents the word given or if in a word problem. The part that's after it is always going to be your denominator. The numerator is going to be a combination of the two. So when you see that symbol intersection, that means the word and. For this first example, a teacher has a bag containing colorful highlighters. The bag consists of six yellow highlighters, five green highlighters, four pink highlighters, and three blue highlighters. Students will choose two highlighters and sequence without replacement. So when you're looking at the notation, you automatically want to go to the second side of it because that's going to be your total. That's going to be your denominator. Out of this denominator, what's true with the numerator in this case when there's not a replacement? Well, first off, I want to count how many highlighters I have. I have six plus five plus four plus three for a total of 18. So initially I start off with 18 and out of the 18, I have five green, but that's not what it's asking. It's asking what would happen if I took one of those greens out and then I am trying to choose a blue highlighter. Well, if I took a green out, I no longer have 18. I now have 17, but I took a green out. So that has nothing to do with how many blues are still left in the bag. So I still have three blues in the bag. So that's my final answer for that one. The next one is asking about yellow. So given yellow out of 18, I have six yellow, but this time it does matter because when I draw the second one, I'm asked, what's the probability of drawing the same color? Well, if I took this one out, I no longer have six yellows. I now have five. I no longer have 18. I now have 17. So the only time that numerator is going to really change is if both colors are the same. Otherwise, you would just go back to your word problem and you look to see what's given based off of the color you're working with. All right. So now I have a situation where blue is being chosen first. And if I go back up to my word problem, there's three blues. However, I'm not asked, being asked that. What's going to happen on my second time choosing a highlighter if I choose pink? What's my probability? So I have 17 now because I took one blue out. So I no longer have that 18. However, I still have four um, chances of choosing a pink one. So four out of 17. For my green, starting off, I have 18 and I have a total of five greens. If I take one of those greens out, I no longer have 18. I have 17. However, I'm now looking at yellow. How many yellows do I have? I have six. Now let's say that you have the same probability, but this time it's not using notation, it's using words. This is how this one would look. So what is the probability of choosing a green highlighter given, this is a key word, that a pink highlighter was selected the first time, again, without replacement? So the way that I'm going to write this in notation form is the probability of selecting a green given that I've already selected a pink. I have four pink. I out of that 18, how many greens can I possibly get if I've already taken a pink out? If I took one pink out, I no longer have 18, I have 17. But in terms of green, I have five green. So that's my answer, five out of 17. Going on to the next one. Find the probability of not choosing a blue highlighter if a yellow highlighter was selected the first time. You can use words or you can use symbols. So not blue, if this time is used instead of the word given, but it means the same thing as in terms of notation and then yellow. So I could have also wrote it like that, which means not blue. And sometimes you'll see it written like that as well. I'm going to see how many yellow I had. I have six yellow to begin with. So six out of 18. However, I'm trying to figure out what's not blue. So I'm going to count everything except blue, including that yellow. However, since I've already taken out one of my yellows, I no longer have six. I have five. So I have five yellow, I have five green, and I have four pink because this says not blue. So I can choose anything else except blue. I no longer have 18 because I already took out a yellow. So I have 17. So when I combine that, my answer would be 14 out of 17.
So in example two, we're asked to complete the Venn diagram and we're given this information here. So be careful. It says 15 like tacos. The whole circle has to be a total of 15. So you have to be careful not to put 15 over on this side by itself. So what you want to start with is where they intersect. So I have eight people who like both tacos and hamburgers. So that's going to be inside of this part portion here where they overlap. So that's where I put my eight. 15 people like tacos. So that means the entire circle has to equal 15. So that's going to be seven plus eight or 15 minus eight would have given me that seven. 13 like hamburgers. 13 minus eight equals five. And then four do not like either. So that's going to go in my universal set here. Now I'm asked to find the probability of people who like tacos given that they like hamburgers. So what I want to do first always is go to the second part after the given notation because this is my total out of only the people who like hamburgers. So that's this entire circle here. That's going to be 13. So out of 13 people, how many of them also like tacos? So that's where your overlap comes into play. So they like like both tacos and hamburgers. So that's eight, eight out of 13. This one is asking what's the probability of people liking tacos given that they do not like hamburgers. This time I am not choosing hamburgers as my total. I'm choosing everything else because this is where they do not like hamburgers. So this is included. So four as well as seven because these people only like tacos for a total of 11. So out of 11 people, how many people just like tacos? It's seven. Because remember, these four, they don't like it either. When I'm trying to figure out what is in my denominator, I just turn this vertical. So it would look something like this. And then I just substitute based off of that. So I'm asked in this case, what's the probability of someone liking hamburgers given that they like tacos? So I want to go ahead and figure out how many people like tacos, this entire circle. So that's 15 people. Out of those 15 people, how many like hamburgers? So again, the overlap is right here. So they like both hamburgers and tacos. So that's eight. So now in this example, I am going to find the probability of those who like hamburgers given that they do not like tacos. So for my total, I am going to select everything except for tacos because they don't like tacos. So that will be five plus four, which is going to give me a total of nine. Out of those nine people, how many of those nine people like hamburgers only? So that would be this section, five. And again, that's because these people like hamburgers and tacos. You see that overlap? That is how you do Venn diagrams. Thumbs up, subscribe, have an awesome day.